Uh-huh. Back with another one. Uh, yeah. It's your boy Kenny Stone, Big Game Kofi B. Yeah. I'm in the house with the good brother. You already know. And we got a special moment for the Uh-huh. I said the BK. Uh-huh. The BK out all on himself. Mike Donovan. Make some noise. Oh yeah. It's good, baby. It's good, big dog. First of all, all right, hold on, hold on, go ahead, do your thing real quick. It's good to finally see you, brother. Huh. Don't forget Likewise. to subscribe to us on YouTube, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Music, we're on Pro Tees, we're on Twitter, we're on Twitch, we're on iHeart. So what? Hashtag what? Dirty Hills, man. Let's I go, said, man. I Hit said, the link down below. How did we fall in love with wrestling? Mm. That's usually the question we asked, the first question we start off with. Okay. Touche. The fall, the fall in love with wrestling question. Well, it, it's the it's the, probably the most generic answer you're always going to get. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. As a kid, Watching wrestling with my fans, I just loved it from that point on. The only difference I could say is that back then everybody was crazy about Hulk Hogan and all Ugh. that stuff, and I was actually a fan of Andre the Giant. Mm, wow, really? Yeah, it's, yeah it's, wow. it's a really weird dynamic. But I remember my mom's always talking about how she used to always see me um, jumping off my wow. couch onto Hulk Hogan. And using one of the figures for Andre the Giant to beat up Hulk Hogan all the time. Oh, wow. We have many Hogan starters of people who uh, first love seeing Hogan. He's been the run DMC of wrestling. But Andre the Giant, I think that's the first time we got that. Yeah. Like seven first, seasons, first, man. Seven, yeah, it's like, the seven. first Andre the Giant we yeah, got. Yeah, man. I think I ain't even that tall to top it off. Yo, 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 <laughs> yo, yo. That's what shocked us because usually you would think that like a... A giant or, or like a, a, a six foot guy with like oh Andre Giant. Mind over oh. batter, I guess, huh? I just I, yeah, I guess I just had a thing for the bad guys. That's Church. what it is. <laughs> that's facts, that's facts. What you got for him, good brother? Hey right, man, like um tell us, like, what was your actually like your first day? Did you go to school? How did you like what's up? How did you get started? Like how did I get into the business? How did you lace yeah. up your motherfucking boots? All right, well, I'm going to keep it G with y'all when I first started keep out. Keep it G. I like that. Keep yeah. it mm -hmm. G. When mm -hmm. I first started it out, um, I was doing, I met up with a bunch of kids that was doing backyard wrestling. And since I already liked wrestling, this was this was a bunch of kids that were doing it when I was in my first year of high school. Mm -hmm. I'm watching them. Uh, I'm watching them, and, it, you know, at some point, this this was, uh, I guess this was the seeds that were being planted Thank to create you. a, at 2KW joint, uh -huh. there was a bunch of dudes that I knew prior to all that craziness, all yeah. that madness that, yeah. they, that they popped off on YouTube that they used to do it. So I would go down, check it out. Showing your age, brother. I mean, I, I, I heard I heard the eighty four earlier, but we not going. You know what I'm oh, saying? Man. Oh man, oh man, oh man, I'm like, I'm like fine wine, brother. I get better with eighty. Nah, you heard it, that's it, that's it, fine wine. That's it. Yeah, brother. Nah, man. so um, I just was watching them do it, and then you know I said I wanted to get involved as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I had there was this kid by the name of uh, Dangerous Dan Payne. Mm. He was uh, he was actually in the business him, himself, mm. like, doing independent wrestling. So he no relation ran. to justice pain, right? No relation nah, to Nick Gage and none of them, right? <laughs> I, I gotta ask these questions, but nah, Go no relation at all. Mm. So we went ahead. Uh, you know, he took me. He literally took me to his backyard in his building, right? And he taught me how to take bumps on the gym mat. So I learned the front bump there. I learned the back bump. Then after that, I wanted to go wrestle with my buddies. So I went ahead and I did like maybe, I think it was like three backyard shows. Ugh. And then after that, my boy was like, yo, there's an opportunity to wrestle for Arena of Puerto Rico in uh, in Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah. So I did a show in a bar with maybe like 25, 40, nah, like 20. I'm being generous. We're talking about like 15, 20. I mean, that's, that's, that's yeah, independent yeah, yeah. wrestling. I mean, that's that's independent wrestling. Yeah, that like, is. Like, so, like, exactly. like, that's the beauty part of it, believe it or not. Man. Exactly. And I thought I thought I was king shit, to be honest <laughs> with you. I was walking out there with this terrible flame Hawaiian shirt. Can't find and, that shit anymore. Yeah, and these pants. I, I remember coming out. I, the one thing I remember is coming out to the ring. I forgot what song I even used. And I just came out. And I was looking like all business, just straight face, <laughs> walking to the ring like as if I had beef with this dude for like 15 years mm -hmm. and he was the high school bully and I was ready to bust his ass. Ooh. It was nothing but pain you was about to give him. No, nah, you were real talk. No. And guess how long it lasted though? The match lasted maybe about two minutes because two minutes in, I gave him a belly to the back and the ring broke. Oh, so wow. So we had to take him home. Holy. Now, now 
Backyard Brooklyn. How was the transition from backyard wrestling to wrestling? Well, the intention professional would, wrestling because that's backyard wrestling is a whole yeah. different thing. Uh, Medicare is not given. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, wow, well, was you that? know, was you green? Nah, when I started doing it, at first it was, again, it was something I've always loved as a kid. Mm -hmm. So when the opportunity came, I took it. Um, it was with the intention that eventually I'm going to get to do independent wrestling. Right. Mm. So when I went ahead and I did those, I did three, I told you, I did like three shots that they <laughs> that they were doing. And then, um, and then right after that, the opportunity came to come do that show. And after I did that show, you know, I was still under that kid's wing. Right. So he was like, yo, I got a, I got a spot that you could go to in Union City so you could start training. And there's a lot of big time. There's, sure there's right. a lot of good professional wrestlers that are come that are, you know, there. True say. And sure enough, that's how I met Mike Morgan, you know, at before it was called uh, AWA. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, later on it was called Ace, Ace Pro Wrestling. Okay, okay. Yeah, you taking was, me back. Was there a uh a name before Mike Donovan, before the seven one eight BK yeah, Outlaw? Yeah. Was there someone before that? Because that Hawaiian shirt is like Yeah, because we I mean we have the Hawaiian shirt. We, we're not gonna flip over that. We're not that's gonna that's flip. The only, but that's the only reason I asked. It's a flame Hawaiian shirt. But that's the only reason I asked. I was like, it has to be someone it had to be someone different. It had to be like the same guy with someone different. Yeah, yeah. It was uh it was Mike Mayhem. Mike Mayhem. And Shout out to Mike Mayhem. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Yo, anybody got some footage of that? Send it in. <laughs> Send it in. Nah, you know what's the crazy thing about it? Like during that time, that was when uh, mm -hmm. the bad boy Tito Ortiz was running shot in the UFC. Oh, so that's why okay. I came, that's why I had the flame shirt. And I was all hyped over that. I used to I used to say I was from San Bernardino, California, which is exactly where he was from and everything. Like okay, that. okay. So, so, so I was really big on that. So would you say he kind of like you know he was a, like a kind of like an influence, a, an influence. Yeah, it was an influence for that for Mike Mayhem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How long did Mike Mayhem last before the outlaw came through? Because you're from BK. Yeah, Cause yeah. we're not gonna skip over that too well, as well. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Church seven one eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. So uh, how did Mike? May uh, how long? How long did Mike Mayhem last? And what was the birth of BK Outlaw? Uh, Mike Mayhem lasted. Psh, damn, it, it lasted like a good, I think, two, two, three years maybe. That's a oh, good wow. run, that's, bro. That is. That is. Yeah, I was. You know, I was there teaming with uh, the dude I told you mm -hmm. that brought me into the business, and. We were we were teaming up tag champions there. You know, we were oh, there as a tag shit. team for a little while. And then, you know, at some point they wanted to go ahead and break us up because they wanted to move him up to the heavyweight division. Mm. And then I ended up getting moved down to the to the light heavyweight division mm -hmm. and did my thing there. Um so yeah, it was a little bit of a run. And then at some point I always had said, like, before I started, I always said, you know, Mike Donovan. Because Donovan that's my legit last name. Right. Okay. So I wanted to use it and you know at that time it wasn't gonna fit for teaming with mm. Dan Payne. You mm. know what I'm saying? So Mike Mayhem and Dan Payne, that's 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 smoother than that is kind of smooth. Dan Payne and Mike, Mike Donovan. Donovan. Yeah. You know? Like who's ready to rumble? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so now nah, like we ended up once I had the opportunity to be by myself, I had that little run. Um I was a little bit of a knucklehead during that time too, so I needed to take a small break. And then when I came back, then it was a very, very small break. So and then when I came back, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was. Would you rather be a hell or a face? You know, like what's up? Well, I'm just. I always say I'm just me with the volume turned up. Okay. And if you feel some type of way about it, then you feel some type of way about it. Mm -hmm. And if you feel in it, you feel in it, because. If you know, I know you've been to a lot of the shows that I performed in, Church. and you have those you have those fans that you can see a lot of, a lot of the and let's be honest, a lot of the people of color, they yeah. immediately gravitate to to what I you know what I show and what I bring I, to. The I damn sure did. Definitely, damn definitely, sure did. definitely. And then you have a lot of people that are very off put by it, so they don't know how to react. So that you know, do I prefer to be an asshole? Absolutely, because that's just. It's easier. It's easier. You, Look at your smile for me. Yeah, you love assholes. Yeah, I love being an asshole. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and it's it, it's natural to me because I tend to be an asshole, and I'm okay with that too. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm not. I even tell people that I personally deal with, like I'm not the easiest person to deal with. So it's either you 
There's no in betweens. It's either love me or you hate me. Is that Facts. just a Brooklyn thing? Like, how's that? How does that go? I don't know. I, I guess, that, that, I guess it's, it was how I was raised. You know, I was raised okay. in a single family home. My mm. mom's was the one taking care of all of us, and she was very much like, she was very no nonsense with dealing with people. Yeah, mama. Yeah, because she dealt with a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, how does your how does your family uh, react now that you're mm-hmm. wrestling and and your mother sees you wrestling and you know? Or your family, whoever, you know what I'm saying, I grew up with you, sees you wrestling now, and they knew that you used to watch it when it, when you were little. How do they react to it now? Well, the, the funny part is that they're actually not surprised. Oh, okay. They're really, they're really not surprised that I, I was doing it. Um, I mean, at first, my mom had her concerns like any other parent would. Uh, she didn't want me to do it. Oh, you're going to break your neck. Something's mm-hmm. going to happen to you. And then once she just started realizing, like, I'm not stopping, <laughs> and she started seeing that I had a little bit of level of success in the business, then she realized, all right, well, you know, just be careful, make sure you're all right, and, you know, and just make the best decisions for you and your children. You said mm. something spot on, man. Success. How long were, were you in the business till you feel like, realized that, like, yo, this is it. Like, I made it. Like, yo. Good question. You know what I'm saying? I still haven't made it yet. Mm. I've been I, I can say success is my success is being able to to get myself to a little bit of bigger platforms mm-hmm. and being able to rub shoulders with, you know, bigger people in the business than me, which is a lot. There's a lot of people. I'm not I'm not the one that's I'm hum I'm still humble to this day regardless and I'm still hungry to this day. You know, I've been doing this nineteen right. years. Ooh. But at the end of the day, I've been able to, you know, so a lot of these guys that you see on TV, I've, right. I've rubbed shoulders with. You know, a lot of these guys that are doing big things, I've I've had conversations with. You well, know, can I've, can we rub I've shoulders all together right here, right facts, now? Let's, let's facts, facts. Shoulders together, man. We go all build, man. But you know, it's it's like it, it it's kind of like to me. Everybody says, you know, there's a lot of people that too. They're like, you know, you've been successful in wrestling, and I'm like, where? Mm. You know. I've been successful in independent wrestling. I've been able to get myself around. I haven't been able to get myself around the places that I want to be, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I can say the biggest success that I've had in independent wrestling is being in Evolve, mm-hmm. which is basically the kickstart, you know, mm-hmm. the kickstart main league to, to it, being seen by the E. If you know, yeah, you but, know. Exactly. So mm-hmm. when you get there, at that point, you're like, you know, I'm one step away, you know? And... Obviously, things with COVID changed a lot. But, yeah, definitely. You know, then at that point, it's just a matter of keeping that momentum going and, and keeping yourself relevant in the business. And you just have to try different ways to make sure that that happens. And how have you kept yourself relevant? Because everywhere we've went, as far as the independent scene over here on the outside, northeast, you've been there. You've been everywhere. If you haven't been a champ there, you've wrestled there. So how have you kept yourself re- relevant and busy? Well, I just, right now, thing, right? yeah, right now my... Uh, my schedule is a lot lighter. As I was telling your homie yeah. before the podcast, I took a break. I was intending to take a break in December after yeah. my match with Pacifica, mm. um, but another opportunity came, so I took it. And you know, I'm just trying to, again, 19 years straight. I just needed a, a little quick break, not minor, like two, three months, and then I'm coming, yeah. and then I'm back in the grind. But this time, this grind is a little bit different than all the other ones, because again, 19 years. I'm I'm 38. It's, yeah, it, it's time. You know what I'm saying. But to me, it's like when I'm saying it's time, I'm not saying it, it's time to hang up. Mm. So I'm saying, you, damn, you answered my question already. To go man. extra hard. Yeah, yeah you I'm did that. It's time to go extra hard, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's like you know, win or walk away. I love it. I love it. Uh, Who, throughout, what? throughout two uh, two decades of doing this, because you know, 19 years, damn it, two decades, 20 years, and shit like that. Uh, have you had? Doubts, or you've never had a doubt, or just just like this is, this is what you want to do. This is your passion. I've I've had my moments where I feel like I felt like just walking away. I felt like I was all right. Like you know, outside of wrestling, I do you know I have a great job. You know, I have you know a great home. I got a good you know. The only support system I have besides my family is is me. Thanks, mm-hmm. You know, and I'm I'm sitting there taking care of my two kids by myself. You know, so single father doing his thing still in life and then can still go out and and, you know, put his passion to professional wrestling. You know, it, it again, it, it has its it has its points, you know, it has mm. its points where you, you where you're just like, damn, I don't know if I'm a, if I'm going to be able to do this. 
But then at the same time, you know, like, you know, let me just keep pushing. Like, I know I know there's light at the end of the tunnel. And every time I'm ready to walk off, something happens. Like, I was ready to walk off and uh, and I was going to get an opportunity for mm -hmm. uh, Future of Honor. But mm. that, that fell apart because I got hurt. Mm. Okay. And then... And then after that, like, I'm, I was like, you know, I'm going to go heavy. I'm going to go hard again. And when I came back, it was like, shit, like, what am I doing? Right. And then Evolve came. <clears throat> and, mm -hmm. you know, I had, I had a quick, small Evolve tryout. And, you know, usually when they, when they did those things with Evolve, they would yeah. go ahead and, you know, the Let's best guy. See you on NXT soon. No, you know no, what I'm it was not, not even that. It would be like the best guy in the tryout would go ahead and get a match on Evolve that night. And I went, and like a lot of the guys that that were there, I knew, and a lot a lot of them were just saying like, with the performance I had that day, they were like, "Well, I guess you're gonna get the match," and then I didn't though. Oh they, wow! They ended up picking somebody else. So at that point, right there, like I, I'm I'm thankful for that though, right? Because that gave that put a chip on my shoulder because mm -hmm. I know I know exactly what I did that day, mm -hmm. you know. And I know I should have been on that day. And even my boy, Steve Pena, who was already working there. Make some time. noise for my man Steve. Yeah, shout out to Steve Pena. Pena. You already know. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he pulled me to the side himself. He's like, yo, that should have been your match. You should have mm. been the one picked tonight. And he was already working for them. Mm. Um, so that really put a chip on my shoulder. And then there was an opportunity to go to go do a three-day camp with them out in Florida. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't it wasn't only Evolve, it was Evolve and NXT. Mm -hmm. So they was they were uh, you know, they came in yeah. to go ahead and talk to guys and everything like that. Because that's when Eddie Kingston and Nolan was on there at the time and exactly. stuff like that. They don't want it. Exactly. Right. They were sitting there doing that and they were just like, you know, like they had the they were looking for talent in NXT as well, but at the same time it was more to get you into Evolve. Because remember, again, Evolve was the system that you would go to. Touché. And get you ready for that possible running NXT. More like a little school training. Yeah, it's like it's like like I said, it's a minor league. So okay. I feel like it was the minor league. It was the best minor leagues I've I've ever loved. Exactly. So we, you know, I went for that three day uh, three day camp, and I was the old head. I was oh, the old man. head. I was the oldest guy there. Oh, you got these young kids that are in their early twenties and great shape. And me, I'm sitting there, This, I think I was 35 at the time, mm. 35, 34 year old. You know, I was in good shape at that time. I was in, I, I've always been in great ring shape. I can, I, I can see um, you, I, not, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I can, I can see you bumping heads with another Brooklyn native. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I'm dying for that. I, I would like to see you in a, in my man, Homicide go one-on-one. -on -one. Mm, I knew he was going to say Homicide too. That, like, that would be... You know what's the funny part? I'm just smiling right now. Yeah. That, that's, can I plant my seeds? Is that, your, is that, seeds? Is that your end goal match? That's my dream match. Church. Love it. That's I love it. Got to like clap that. it up for that. If, you heard, if you're hearing, you're watching, hit the link down below. Mike Donovan. No, fuck that. BK Outlaw Donovan versus Homicide, man. Another BK definitely, Outlaw. Definitely. Goddamn self, man. Is there, is there uh, in these 20 years, is there anyone who's like, you've not been able to wrestle and you feel like, ah, oh, it's going to be out. Mm -hmm. opportunity. Every time the opportunities came, you haven't been able to wrestle them. Oh uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, you talking about all around? Yeah. But damn, how many matches have you had, brother? No, psh, I can't even count. I don't Ugh. remember. But they're like the names I've. Re I haven't like. I can't say I've re wrestled Kevin Steen. Mm. I can't say I wrestled. You know, uh, El Generico. Those guys. Mm -hmm. I, I never. I never got into the ring with them. I would love to. Um. But you're talking about just all around anybody. Yeah, yeah. Guys, we know. Hey, I look. would say, I would honestly say then, yeah, I would say like a Kevin Steen or, you know, yeah, a Kevin Steen, I would say for sure, mm -hmm. because he's been, he's been in the Northeast, so he knows the style and he knows mm -hmm. the grit of it. And he just looks like a gritty, raw dude anyway. So that's my boy. That would be a match where you just see two people killing each other. Fire. Now, another, another guy I could see you getting in the ring with. Probably have or you haven't. The professional low key. Never had a match with him. Oh, that would be a great one. That 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 right there. That's let's put that in the universe. BK Donovan versus Low Key. Fuck it. 
versus uh, 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 homicide, triple threat, H O G, something. Let's 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 book That'd this shit. Fire. Catalyst. Let's That'd do it right fire. now. You know what's crazy? Upper limit. What's up? You know what's crazy? When I first started wrestling and I first ran into Low Key, I was extremely intimidated by him mm -hmm. because of the style that he, you know, the style that he goes, and you know, to think it, it was funny because I remember like. I've wrestled Mac, I've wrestled Moff, I've right. wrestled both mm -hmm. of them already. But I remember talking to Moff, I, I was talking to Mac one day, and I had told them, I was like, you know, <laughs> like it's just. That was crazy. You dropped an exclusive. Yeah, that was a big ball. That was, that was a big dirty ball. exclusive. You better beep that out. Please. All right, we're going to bleep that one out. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I had told him that, and he was just like, you shouldn't need, it's not him you need to worry about. Right. It's homicide you need to worry mm -hmm. about. Because when homicide goes, he goes. He's doing you know? his thing, man. And I, I sat there, I've sat there and I've, uh, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be a, a select few that have been able to go when he was training people down at Super Craze. Mm. Shout out to Super Craze. Yeah, Super Craze, for sure. And, and his training, man, you got to be prepared. And if you're not prepared, bro, you get exposed very fast. Book of Caval. Oh, for sure. Like, I went down there, and I thought, like, again, I was I was known, in, at least in our small area, for my cardio. Like, mm -hmm. I can go in the ring. I can walk yeah, out. Yeah, you damn sure dude, can, bro. And dudes are winded, and I'm sitting there like I'm fine. I'm like, you good? You know? But I went there thinking, like, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Bro, when I tell you at the end of that training, I was sitting there <laughs> praying that he wasn't going to continue anymore with any more of his drills. I'm telling you, like, wow, it was intense, bro. And then, like, how long did it go on for? Yeah, nah, it was like three hours of training. Oh, fuck. Nah, but you know, that's normal training. But that's not it's, normal it's training. Not, it's not, it's not, it's that's normal not normal. It's not normal. Oh, it's definitely normal wrestling training, but it's not. Is not in the way that the way that he did it was completely different. I feel mm -hmm. because of the the warm ups he did, he already had you done by warm ups. So then, by the time you're getting in the ring already, you already cooked, and it's just a matter of you can last. And oh. I, I remember, like, uh, you know, I went back the next week because I for sure was coming back the next week, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew like. Prior to that, I had to get myself ready. Like so, my I picked up my cardio even more at the gym and everything like that. And by the time I got to the next week, I was fine and I felt like I got through it. And I remember, and I'm laughing because now <laughs> I remember what he told me because I was like, "Yo, like I got through your workouts," and he was like, "Yeah, today was a light day." Oh, oh, like, wow! No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, he did. I said that light day. Like, no, oh, oh yeah. my god. No. But he and and whenever he trained me, like I, you know, the one thing I know, at least I've noticed about his character, if if he don't fuck with you, he don't fuck with Facts. you. Facts. Okay. And if he does, he'll be the person that's that's pushing you. And I've always noticed every time I've interacted with with homicide, he's always trying to either teach me some things, or even like day at the training when I was training with him, he was trying to push me because he would tell me when I'm there and he saw that I'm struggling. He was like, "You gonna quit? I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab the bag for you." And I was like, "Get the fuck away from me!" And he, you know, you say those things, but you know he appreciates that because you right. know you know that you the grind. That he's pushing you. Yeah. Two, yeah, yeah. That's dope right there. Now let's 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 let's, let's, let's switch it up real quick. Mad respect for homicide. Yo, mad respect for homicide. Homicide. Shout to low key too. Been in the game, damn man, thirty years. It's got damn self, man. Yeah, still, yeah. respectfully. Still, yeah, still see. Gonna rotate this bitch real, real quick, man. Um, you from Brooklyn, man. Okay. Yeah, I got. Let me ask the first Brooklyn oh. question, man. Let me ask the first Brooklyn Get question, em. man. All from Brooklyn. You from Brooklyn? Get him. Okay. Biggie or Jay Z? Oh, just went there. I have to. This is the one question you gotta ask. Oh God. Jazzo. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm always have to go with uh, Biggie. Biggie, it's mm. always gonna be Biggie for me. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, Jay Z is a conglomerate of his own, and but you got to remember this: with all the money Jay made and all this and that, mm -hmm. you got to remember Biggie's life was cut short. So just imagine how many hits he would have came up with. Facts, or, you know how much how much money he could have made during that time. That's facts, and at the same time too, money was different back then than it is. Yeah, sure was. So yeah, yeah. You got to think about it that way. Uh, Right now, if Biggie and if that Biggie and Tupac thing never occurred, 
And you know, both those guys were still alive. Those would still be I'll the always OG say it. kings right always now. Always say it. Hip hop industry. Shit. Definitely, definitely, definitely. You want to hit him with some more Brooklyn questions? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You got it. All right, man. Oh. The toughest neighborhood in Brooklyn. Nah, you don't ask that. You, nah, you, I gotta ask nah, that. Nah, you ask. You got now. You ask Canarsi. Oh, now you want to ask the question. Go that's, ahead. That's go how ahead. you ask <laughs> the tough questions in there. Like, you don't ask Marcy. what's the toughest neighborhood. You yeah, ask, well, the whole Brooklyn is kind of tough. Which one is tougher? Red Hook, the East. Ooh. Or Crown Heights. Is Crown House considered the West? Nah, it's just Crown Heights. <laughs> now you're just tripping. <laughs> ah, you got me on that one. Because remember, I'm from the south side of Brooklyn. Legit. Okay. I'm, by, I'm off. I used to live off of Church Avenue and okay. Flatbush Avenue. No strength. Yeah, exactly. All right, now. So that was my area. And I used to always, that's all Haitians and Trinidad. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Okay. Bugging out all the time. So the Parkway so was your. Was, you you were on Parkway going crazy, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm used. He's to those a Crown Heights guy. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna... <laughs> I'm used to those guys bugging out all the time, you know. Okay. And then all right, all right. Go so we're gonna Sunset say the whole Park. Brooklyn. How about that? <laughs> yeah, let's just say all the. Let's say the whole Brooklyn. At least my, at least from my, you know, from my experience, that's how it was. Don't get me wrong. In my area, you go into a certain part. And then there's the nice little area where everybody's nice and <laughs> yeah, fancy. yeah, yeah. We got that over here. Yeah, but then you know, then if you continue moving forward, you could keep walking. You be like, well, uh, I, uh, oh, oh, you don't want to go to. We're it. not in the Kansas exactly. no more. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What you got for? Uh, all right, man. Um, you watch uh hip hop. Of course, you listen to hip hop, uh, rap, and all that, man. Um, you spit bars. Nah. Have you ever spit spit bars? I've, I've you tried when I was younger, and it was horrible. Can you remember a rhyme? Uh, you know, I'm putting your ass in the hot seat. Uh, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> nah, nah, <don't, laughs> it was terrible, bro. Nah, I even tried. He said, don't even try. Don't even I try. Even tried. Uh, give, us All right. a, give us a secret talent. Before, yeah, that, yeah, I'm glad you said yeah, that. Before, I, was, I had to get that out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that was the next time I was coming. I was like, if you can rap, you got a secret talent. <laughs> you play the violin. You tap dance. What, what's, what's going on? Nah, you know. <laughs> the cello. What was going on? He can paint. No, I can actually. I used to be very good at drawing and everything like that. So wow. Much, so much to a point that my mom's was like, during that time, not, I, this is before wrestling, like she thought I was going to be like a cartoon artist and everything. Wow. So I was go that direction in life. And then also, too, the typical Hispanic thing, I'm, I was very good at baseball. <laughs> oh. Uh, so the point that, that, that was, <laughs> that's very You know, that, that was crazy because was- I forget. <laughs> I, I, yo, I. That, like, that a football. Yeah, I don't know. It fucks me up when you said that. I was like, baseball. I was like, in my head, I'm like, Spanish baseball? Yeah, they do, bro. <laughs> I like, but I forget. I forget. Hey, you guys dude, are pretty was, good. Yeah, it was. A, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, you guys are great. Who am I to consider? I DC can't play a lick at shit. <laughs> DC or Marvel? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going with Marvel. Not DC person. Mm, Marvel or Fresh Prince? Marvel or Martin I mean, or Fresh Prince? Martin or Fresh Prince. I said Marvel. No, that, that's not Martin for the culture, bro. <laughs> I love Martin. I, lo- mm. I like Fresh Prince. Don't get me wrong, and I it's a little bit more. It, I don't know. It's a little bit more. Uh, how can I say? It? Like fine tuning someone in life. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got them stories to fine tune yeah. you, and it, it brings out on that show. It was more or less about more realistic things that were going on in the world. Whereas Martin was that show that you could get away from all that. Mm. Facts. That is, you know, I never thought about that either God like that. damn, you hitting a home, brother. God Never thought damn. about that. Martin is one of those. Um, uh, top five artists. Top five rap artists. Uh, you you, you let him off artists. easy, man. Uh, yeah, that was an easy one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I let him off easy. Can I get him? Yeah, you got him. Biggie. Yo. Nah, nah, we doing oh, this. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, let him. <laughs> Biggie, Pac, Nas. Um... Snoop. Yeah, I'm going to say Snoop. I love Snoop. Somebody asked me about that the other day. And you know you know who else is? I just think he's crazy just for the way he spits. Come on. Uh, Buster Rhymes. Fire. No, boy, boy, you... you Fire. You, look, you... Look, All of those <laughs> are top five worthy people. Now, we need an honorable mention now, bro. Give us an honorable mention. Honorable mention? Um, run DMC. Fire. Damn. You got to make your own porn, but you only using wrestling terms. What would the name be? Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, take it home. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I'm sorry. I'm blushing. Cause I, <laughs> mine's, mine's, probably, mine's just probably be like short and sweet. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Take my strong hair. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Something. Be, you feel me? Like this little guy's not hanging out tonight. Ah, it, it'll be a long, man. it'll be a long outdrawn nah, title extra. for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> for nothing, you know? <laughs> now, um, again, you're, you're, you're single pops and stuff like that. Uh, how, how is it being a girl dad, man? Uh, it's amazing. A dad girl, girl dad? It's, it's fun. A, it's amazing. I mean, I got my son is 16. My daughter just turned 14 recently. Damn, OT. Yeah, so, yeah, so it, Damn, old hat. Damn, nah, we about to put you two in a senior citizen home back. I had to put the, to put the Kevin Hart shit up there. <laughs> Shout out to nah, the champ, boy. It's it's amazing, man. Like, it's amazing watching yeah. them grow up. Come to shows and stuff like yeah, that. Oh, know, yeah, they yeah. always come to shows. Like, I, I remember the funny thing. Uh, uh, back when I was going to go ahead and, you know, make my return back to Pro Wrestling mm -hmm. Magic after a long break, after my injury, mm -hmm. um, the peop the fans knew I was some of the fans knew I was gonna come back because of the fact that they saw my kids. Ah. They were always at the shows. So when they saw it, they were like, yo, Donovan's coming back. The pop was crazy when the you pop was crazy. Yeah, the pop was out of line. I remember the pop was really crazy. I didn't expect that. So I was really happy with it. Um, but yeah, just watching them grow up, it's it's amazing, man, because you know, you know, at, at the same token, you're 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 kind of the reason why they're going in a certain direction. Right. So you're you're being at the same time a role model to them. So, like I said, like they'll see me. They'll see me on my grind. You know, they'll see me. They see me come home, wake up early in the morning, like around five o'clock in the morning, to go to the gym real quick, get myself ready. Mm. Then I'm on my way to work. When I get back home, I'm there. I'm cooking for them. Ah, uh, I'm yeah, yeah real poppy shit. Now yeah. sweet ass cooking. Yeah, cook for them real quick. If my daughter hasn't done it already, because she she's very self sufficient. Shout out mm, to her. I love it. And then you know, and then after that, I'm going to the gym to go lift. Then I'm back home. Huh. And, you know, it's to the point now that we're that they're at that age where now my son's like, "Yo, dad, can I go with you?" Mm. My daughter's like, "Hey, dad, give me a membership so I could go with my brother." You I'm know, crying for you right now. Like I'm behind these shades. Yeah, I'm, I'm cheering. My kids don't want to go nowhere. Yeah, I'm cheering. Like I'm literally <laughs> when they cheering. Get, when they get that age, they, my daughters change. be like, "No, daddy." <laughs> I don't want to do it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> ever, ever want to go with me so, nowhere? Pancakes and waffles, man. Pancakes and waffles. I like pancakes. Ah, they taste like sponge. No, my kids. Pancakes? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't ask you what I said. Pancakes is fire. You gotta make them. I'm a waffle that's man. What it is. Yeah. Oh, you French, know, French toast? toast. I love French toast, but that pancake. Oh, I guess like it's bread toast. with syrup. That's what it is, though. I like yo. You know what? I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> if you take a shorty home with you, and you make a French toast the next day, fire. You got it going. Exactly. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I take her home, it's dinner on me, then breakfast on her. Exactly. Oh, yeah. that's, that's how we move. That's how we move. You, you mean it's dinner on you and dessert on her? I don't know. We just gonna skip straight to dessert. I'm honest with you. It's it's just usually there. You go with your shit. She gotta go. <laughs> ain't no look, dinner. Looking, looking for the way out. Ain't no ain't no dinner or nothing. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna and leave hungry. Uh, ah, That's me. <laughs> ah, I like that. Oh, what you got for a big homie? Um, oh, I got him. I got him. Uh, which animal is the rudest? If animals could talk, which animal would be the rudest? Cat. I think an ostrich for some reason. Like I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I think most people think cats are assholes. Because yeah, how many really times have we gotten yeah, cats? Heard that. They we've sit heard there that. and they look at you like they know they're about to do something reckless and they're looking at you and you're like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. They be having a stink face like, I be, I be seeing all them videos. I don't fuck with cats. I don't like, I don't have cats. I know people that do. I'm just like, oh, cool. But I don't. People that have cats, they ain't going to never have get married or have kids or anything. What you got for them? Uh, Xbox. Or PlayStation. I got an Xbox. Boom! <laughs> you you won't be bad for the show. Fuck with him, say some shit like that. <laughs> Xbox, I Xbox. Xbox. With Xbox. I nah, love I Xbox. Man. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. What, what's the number one game? Boom! You have nothing to do. Relax. Kids is gone. What's the game you're playing? Madden. Fire. I was. I thought oh, you were gonna say like Minecraft or Fortnite or some shit like that. I would have thought he would have. I would have thought, thought, thought he would have said like uh, Call of Duty or, yeah, or. I used to. I used to be into Call of Duty and Gears of War and everything like mm. that. I, I like RPG games. Okay, those, those are my thing. Because remember, it's if you're if you ain't doing nothing, that that's very time consuming. Mm. And you know, you get caught up in yeah. the story and you. There's times that when I was younger playing like the N64 and everything like that, Ooh. where you'll sit there and you'll play a game and you'll. I used to play, I remember I played Zombies Ate My Neighbor, and I was stuck on that game until I was done. So I started at like maybe 11 o'clock in the morning, and I, I damn That's how I was with go, 007. I, yeah, I was like that with 007. Like 8 o'clock in the morning. No, I, already, I, I remember. I finished the game. Have you ever paused the game and then 
turned the TV off, and then came back the next day as a kid? Nah, I finished it. I used to go through. My mom used to wake up like, go the fuck to bed. Oh, man, my grandmother would like, cut the TV off. So we would pause the game. (laughs) Cut the TV off and they come back the next day where it was exactly it was like, yeah. That's when you had an Atari, right? Yeah. No, no, we had a 64. 64. You old too. Yo, that would literally happen if, if I'm tired and I really can't sit through the game and I'm nodding off. Mm-hmm. I'll pause it and then go to sleep. Well, but I'll be the first one back up. Well, let's be like honest. Four hours to go play. Oh, the wow, greatest things wow. were memory cards. That's the greatest thing that they ever gave to a game system was memory cards. Yeah, because before be memory cards, you had to just pause it. You know, that, that, that's the greatest thing. Because, yep. say, what else you got for him, big homie? Oh, man, you make me want to go blow out a cartridge tonight, right now. <laughs> I think you like, said blow out a cartridge. Damn, man. I want to actually get those. Uh, they got those those little systems now. Mm-hmm. That you can buy. It comes with all the... Oh, yeah. We got them. We got, oh, yeah. we, we got, we got an we got Xbox. Give us, yeah. I don't know, man. Give us something that nobody knows about. What's the biggest... Misconception yeah. of, of BK Outlaw? Um, well, so it's one thing, like I said, uh, everybody that knows me, that knows me personally, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, and, and I'm very picky with people that I, you know, that I fuck with. But you really might be a teddy bear, something like that? You know? some, some sort of okay, way. Okay. Like, I got, you know, shouts to my people, you know, Sebastian Cage. Woo! Okay. Adriel, Steve oh. Pena, you know, um, Trey Felipe. Aren't you with that faction? That's my crew. All right. JC Storm, <laughs> JC Storm, you know, all those people. I love her. Like, fire. <laughs> I just, oh, you heard that. <laughs> fire. Hey, girl. Uh, she knows it. Hit the I, link down I below. I don't hesitate to tell her. <laughs> she knows it. Yo, if y'all just free. tuning in, again, we got the BK Outlaw in the building, Donovan. Hit the link down below for more, man. Let's go. Nah, but they, they know I'm that type of person that, you know, if I fuck with you, I fuck with you. I'll give the shirt off my back for you. Uh, but if I don't fuck with you, keep away from me. Mm-hmm. And it's not disrespectful or anything like that. Just if if I feel like you're fake and, and if I'm not feeling your vibe... I don't even want you around me. Right. How do you get prepared for a match? Uh, usually, my preparation from a match starts from the day of. Like, you know, I'll usually get prepared for a match, like, I mean, weeks in advance. I'm already training at the mm-hmm. gym, already getting myself where I want to look. Um, you know, if I want to get some kind of new gear or something, I'll go ahead that. If I want to fix my gear, I'll get mm-hmm. it fixed up. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's all gym preparation. I'll watch a couple of matches from the other person. So I get an idea of what they do. Uh, I'm hoping that they do the same, which is nine times out of 10, they end up telling me things that I do that I'm like, oh, shit, they watch my tape. Mm. Um, and, you know, on the car ride there, I'm just listening to heavy ass hip hop and yeah. getting myself in a mood. You know, yeah. there's actually there's one song that I listen to now uh, and it's called Ramen and OJ. You know that song? Mm-mm. I, I like some ramen noodles, though. I do like oodles and noodles. I like, you, right? I like oodles and noodles, right. especially but the chicken one. But if you listen one. to that song, like that song, for some reason, it gets me hyped up, and it just gets me in that mood that I'm ready to, I'm ready to go. Let me see. Are there any new artists that you've been listening to? Since, really like, because you know we're we're the same age. Are, yeah. are there any new people that you oh, like? Yeah. Okay, I can listen to this new guy. Ramen and OJ, Jordan oh, Lucas, Lucas and little baby. Uh. Okay. You Listen to that song. I'm telling we're, you. We're not fans of Jonah Lucas. I'm sure. At all. You know, at all. No, 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 no. The song itself. <laughs> the, the song itself. Like, I don't, I'm not into, to, you know, the new school hip hop. Because, again, a lot of the things during that time, everybody was like, nobody had their own voice. Everybody sounded the same. It's not like you listen to Snoop, where Snoop sounds like a legit pimp talking to you. Yeah. Or you sound, you hear LL Cool J rapping where he sounds like he's trying to make love to you while he's spitting at you. Now you can tell he's licking his lips or something like that. Or you got, you got Pac, you know, that's sitting there and, you know, telling you a story. You know, same thing with Biggie. He's taking you on a journey of his life. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, Everybody had their voice. Everybody sounded different back then. Now everybody pretty much sounds the same. Or they're going, you know, everybody's doing, like, trying to go in the same vibe and the same format. They're not, nobody's really different. And the ones that are different are six feet under already. We don't know what yeah, the that fuck is, is going true. on. We don't so know. Let me ask you a question. Um, before we even get out of here and all that, um, just tell people, yo, how... Give advice, you know what I'm saying, to people that's, uh, you know, trying to do what you do, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Well, I- I'll say this. Like, if you're trying to get into professional wrestling, uh, I'd say go for it. 
absolutely go for it, but make sure that, you know, you finish school. To me, school is the most important thing. You got to have a degree. Um, you know, I'm pushing my son right now for a degree to make sure he, you know, once he's done with high school, he goes to college and gets something right. behind him. You know, and at least that way you have something to fall back on. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people I've seen that that have made a lot of money in this business that, you know, after they get released from big big companies, they they got they got nothing under them. Wow. They didn't make good investments. They didn't, you know, they didn't sit, they didn't save money. They now were they just, back to performing in front of 15 people. Exactly. And now they got they got nothing. They got no health insurance. They got nothing to fall back on. So they sit in there struggling. You know, so make sure you have something to fall back on, you know, and and really think if you're mentally strong and ready to be in this business, because it's not easy. Mm-hmm. It's not something where two seconds you're just going to walk in and become famous. Like, you know, for people to be able to do that, it's a dime a dozen. It's very rare to be able to get in here and just get it like that, you know, which is the problem with the business right now. Like mm. a lot of kids out there and I'm just speaking straight truth. And if someone feels if you feel nah, some type speak of way that about shit. it, we love this shit. If you feel some type of way about it, come find me in the locker room and we'll have a conversation. Yeah, right? speak that shit. If you feel in some other type of way, we can step outside too. Ah. I don't mind that. But a lot of the kids in the business now, the way they work is trash. It's straight trash because everybody thinks everybody's got to move fifty miles an hour. No, you don't. And you, you, you guys are forgetting the facts that you guys got to tell a story. And that's how you really draw in the crowd. All right. You get people to actually want to see what you're doing because you take them on a roller coaster ride. And it's not about doing 50 million flips or being the best acrobatic person in the world. Like, don't get me wrong, there's always a time and place for that, but you got to fit it in, in the right spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It can't just start out like that because by the time you get to the end, it's it's just like let, let's go back to it's just like it's like porn. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. always that build up to the scene. And then right when you get to that climax, that's the big moment where everybody's, you know what I'm saying? I'll be, yeah. be done with my thumb in my mouth. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> be, yeah. But, you know, that, that's, that's, how, that's how professional wrestling is. Yeah. And pretty much everything else is, is it starts out that way. It's very slow and steady. It picks up, picks up, and then It's boom. like a musical. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like, what is it? It's like a teapot. It's yeah. like a teapot. It's, it's building up, it's building up, building up. And it's finally, that kettle, boom, it, yeah. Exactly. So you got to you got to think about it in in that way like you know make sure you're telling your story make sure everything that you do actually love makes it. sense I love it because if it doesn't then you're just going to be like everybody else there's a lot of wrestlers out there that they come off generic and they come off the oh, same man I love that doing shit the same things nobody's trying to tell a story so when you get into this business that should be the first thing that you learn on top of the fact that you should learn how to bump and everything like that go watch tapes go watch go watch all the old heads that actually made money. Mm. Listen to the people that made money. I'm going to say this again. Yeah, yeah, please. Listen to the people that have made mm-hmm. money in this business. Because those are the people that are going to steer you in the right direction. If you're going to go to a seminar, go to a seminar from someone who has made money from right. this business. Or have people... That they that have trained under them that are successful now, and those people can actually point at that person and say, "He's a good reason why I'm why I made it right now." Oh, you go shit. to those people; those are the people you're gonna actually learn from. I sat there, and at one point, I thought I was too good to go to seminars. Mm. I was like, "Nah, I don't need to go there. Why I gotta go there?" Mm. Then you know, over time, you see that, and you realize, like, "Yo, if I go here, look how much knowledge am I gonna pick up going there?" Right. And it made me a better worker. You know, sitting there with people. These again, these people made money in the business, right? So I made sure I went to the right seminars and learned from the right people. And just like as a wrestler, try every everything looks more convincing and looks better for everybody when it looks natural. To say so again, you're doing matches and you might get reactions and everything, and that's fantastic. And I wish and I pray everybody can get that. But at the same time, don't think you king shit because you got a reaction. Go back, study your tape. Realize exactly what you're doing and understand like what's gonna get the crowd to react. But don't always go to it all the time because if you keep going to it, there could be a match where guys are hitting each other like crazy, 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 crazy. And then they build up to this one big moment where they kill them. And you notice how the crowd don't react? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because they've already been doing it the whole match. Oh, that's so fact. why are you gonna care now at this moment when you when in your brain, when you put together that match with somebody in your brain? You already know what people are going to react to and what Fact. they're not going to react to. So when they sit there and they don't react to it, 
you're feeling some type of way mentally while you're laying there in that match. But if you really, if you really digest it and sit mm-hmm. back and look at your tape, you're gonna realize I did so much prior to that happening. Of course, nobody's gonna care at that moment. I love you it. Know? So make sure you sit there and go watch the tape from the people that heard what you said. Yeah, make sure you watch the tape from people that know what they're doing. Go to the right people for advice. Like, like I said, I will go. You know, this is one of the guys in my own group, and I will go to him all the time. And he goes, he comes to me too now. You know, because he believes in what I. You might as well just give your shout outs as well, brother. (laughs) You might as well give the shout outs. Azrael's one of my boys that I, you know, I go to him all the time if I need something. uh, You know, Mm -hmm. when it comes to wrestling, I'll ask him, son. He'll tell me, yeah, no. Or even with anything involving the group that we have. And, you know, he comes to me as well, too. Because he knows that I'm knowledgeable with it. And I'm not right. saying that to blow smoke up my ass. Nah, shit. I'm just saying that I, I got people that could vouch for me and say that I know, you know what I'm talking about. You know? You walk it like you talk it, basically. Exactly. I just got to get myself over the hump now. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like that, boy. So, just again, when you when you break it into the business, man, just make sure you got something to fall back on. Make sure you actually have a career besides professional wrestling that you know you can commit to because the worst thing I could see is a broke wrestler because they're struggling and they're just depending on professional wrestling. That's not going to get you. That's not going to get you by in life, bro. Mm. You know, you got to be able to take care of yourself while you're doing that. That is true. That is true. You out there getting a job. Please make sure you're out there hustling. You heard the outlaw. While you're hustling as well to go ahead and make it in this business, because I promise you, once it really happens, at least you're gonna, at least you're gonna know you got something under you. You have a foundation already there for your life. Because remember, at the end of the day, everybody in this business, yeah, they're doing it because they love professional wrestling. But now, when you make it to that, you know, to that tier in professional wrestling, it's not only about wrestling now. It's about taking care of your family. Your livelihood. It's, it's about, about the people who come behind nah, you. Real exactly. Shit. It's about taking it's, care it's of yourself impact. now, too. It's about basically now when you make all these guys right now in AEW, WWE, MLW, all these other promotions right now, right. what they're doing, yeah, they love professional wrestling. And that's what got them there to now a point that this is their job. Now they're, now what they're thinking is, how am I going to set myself up mm-hmm. for the rest of my life now? Mm-hmm. You know? It's all, yeah, it's great. Fame and fortune is great, but you got to make sure that when all that's done, because at some point it's going to done. Ain't nobody Hulk Hogan. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody Ric Flair. Hogan ain't even Hogan. They're doing it. Right. So once it's finally over and said and done, what's going to be your end game? What's your end story? Because my end story ain't going to be, you know, the Brooklyn Outlaw Donovan. You know, my end story is going to be who I am. Once Esquire. everything love stops. It. Esquire. You feel me? You know I'm just speaking real talk like about it, you know, because... And, and I, you know, I do pray that, you know, that opportunity comes where I can go ahead and get there. And I think it was better that it, it's happening the way it's happening now because it's more organic. I, it's more organic and I'm going to appreciate it more now. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be the way if I was young and I would have got this level of success, I would have burned every bridge I, I would have had because I was young minded. I wasn't ready for that kind of stuff. Now, if you put me in that situation, I promise you. I'll knock it out the damn park. Wow, that's fire. Man that. Um, any shout outs, big homie, before we get out of here? Ah, shout out to my boys, Hispano Sonidos, Trey Felipe, Sebastian Cage, Azrael, the big hitter who's going to be probably the first dude in our team to get signed, mm. Steve Pena. Yeah. And the second one that's going to get signed, beautiful JC Storm. Hey, girl. Shout out then to him. Shout out, you know, shout out to Ace Pro Wrestling, Mike Morgan, for first giving me the opportunity, you know. Shout out to my boy Jay Lethal for mm-hmm. letting me in on some of his training lessons. Right. When he was with his students. You know, shout out to Pro Wrestling Magic for giving me a platform to perform on. And, you know, shout out to the OGs, Homicide, Low Key. Yeah, Steve we need Monster that match. Mag, we need all that, Dan Moth. We need that. For, you know, for being the OGs in, in New York and making New York pop in the way it is and making a dude like me, making a dude like, you know, like, um, like uh, Angel Ortiz, mm-hmm. Drastic, and all those Real dudes shit. to want to go ahead and want to make it in this business, mm-hmm. you know? So shout out to the OGs right there. And yeah, like he just said, bro, get me that match with Homicide. Whoever's Need ready that. for it, I'm tell, ready tell, for tell it. where they can find you at again before we yeah. dip out this yeah. bitch. Yeah. Right? I don't you know where to find you, You can find you, me on Instagram at 718 underscore, I mean, uh-huh. sorry, at BK underscore 718 outlaw. 
All right, did I do it right? I don't even remember my own thing. It's no, down below. Down below. Down below. <laughs> no, it's BK <laughs> underscore Outlaw 718. <laughs> and you can catch me on TikTok, 718 Outlaw, Yo, being real. a daddy and still bugging out over there. Yo, just know all the links will be down in below. <laughs> yeah, I don't you know already what know what about. it is, man. It's your boy, Kenneth Stones, a.k.a. Kofi Yo, Weasel. I am the D-O-E. Good brother, both together, collectively, together we are. The, the Dirty, Dirty Hills. Hills. Bow. And we got your boy, Mike. Donovan, I just, I <laughs> this guy here, seven one eight, the no, outlaw in the building. You already you know what it is. We out of here. Hashtag Donovan. <laughs> That's right. You know what it is. Seven one eight. Oh I'll be out there all the time. yeah. <laughs> Support independent wrestling. Bang.